everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA. I want to go over one of the sessions that's go that is I'm going to go through in the upcoming Enterprise DNA Learning Summit because I think that, that the techniques that you can utilize uh, to be able to create financial reporting inside of Power BI have improved immeasurably uh, of late. And not only that, just with a bit of imagination, you can do this integrated. You can integrate um, elements of your data, elements of your uh, calculations, um, and bring them in into this table feature that uh, is enabled via Power BI now, right now, uh, and create some really compelling financial analysis. Now, traditionally, the table f features just were not that good uh, inside of Power BI, but they've been improved a lot of late. I don't want to go too far around into detail around how to set that up, etc., because I'm going to do that in the Learning Summit. I'll leave a link the, to the description below, but we're going to have an hour session basically on financials, uh, how to create financials, and um, it's a free, it's a t t entirely free. All you have to do is register and come to the event, uh, which will be a li live virtual event. But what I want to show you is how you can integrate, how we can integrate our financial information. Now, what do I even mean by that? Now, now I've got to do a bit of a, uh, a bit of a revision around, around that, and you'll quickly see the issue and how we need to solve it, and how I solved it by just really just a bit of imagination, basically, uh, uh, and, and then um, visualizing what I wanted in my mind um, as the output, and then trying to configure my model uh, and my tables in a way that I could then integrate them. I can integrate my revenues and I can integrate my expenses. Okay, so what is the issue? What is the issue? Let's go have a look. Now, in a lot of cases, right, in a lot of cases, your revenues, for example, so we have a look at this this table here, your revenues, your revenues here will be in a separate table to say your expenses, or they'll be generated in a slightly different way, right? Your expenses could be in some different program, uh, that monitors everything that's going on in, on in, uh, within the business or all the invoices, etc., etc., etc. But your revenues usually will come down and will usually be derived from some sort of transaction table, right? So if I just go and find my one here, so it's very generic. I've used this many, many times, but um, but it's it you know it just shows you you, you don't, it doesn't need to be any more com complex than what I've used many times over um, to still be able to do and still be able to create this integrated financial reporting. Now, if we have a look at here, this is this is basically every single transaction that this, this company has made for a number of years, right? And we don't even have in here, for example, we don't even have like a revenue column. So I used an uh, iterating function where I went order quantity times uh, total unit price, and then that gave me my revenue, right? So if I just come and have a look uh, in my key measures here, total sales, you'll see that's what this particular formula does as well. Now, this is the big issue, right? This is the big issue, is that this is our, this is our revenue table. But look at what the data came out for, for our expenses. So this, this, this is the expense table. Like you, you may have something very similar to this. You, you, you may not. I'm not sure. But this is just how I've seen expenses um, laid out, right? Now, there is absolutely, but, but by the way the tables are right now, there is absolutely no way that you can integrate your revenues and your expenses in one table. It's just impossible. There's no way in Power BI, right? But not sorry not directly based on the way they look right now but there is a way and that's and that's the cool thing we can we can integrate these two elements of our financials together and get them into one table we just need to do a few a few different steps now i'm going to i'll quickly go over them because i don't want this tutorial to run uh, too long but obviously uh, during the learning summit we're going to have a whole lot more time to go in, into how to do this in detail but i'm just going to quickly run through the steps now the first thing we need to do is that this table here, this table here is just not set up well for Power BI at all. You need all of these elements to be in one column. So what I did for that is I came to the query editor, so I bought the I bought the table in. I bought the table in and we'll just have a look here, I'll just find it. So when I first brought in the table, this is, this is what it looked like, right? So you see here how we've got the dates across the top. Now, if I come down to the bottom, you'll see this is what the table looks like at the end of the day, where I have, um, I'll just do a refresh, where I have 
we've got the expense item, the expense category, month, and value, all long and thin. That's the, that's the way to think of it, right? Now I did that by unpivoting, um, but I won't cover cover that here because I have covered it in the past, and I will show you show you certainly all those who register for the Learning Summit event how to how to do that. It's not very difficult at all, um, but but a really good uh, concept to get um, to to nail down. But anyway, so this is the expenses, right? This is the expenses table now. Now we still have an issue though. Look at our sales table. It's still not. You know, there's, there's no aggregation in terms of a way we might want to aggregate revenues, right? We need to somehow get a table in a similar structure to, to this and sort of bang them together so that then we can create a, a, a table of our financials. So I didn't do it in the query editor, but check out how I did do it inside of here, inside of the tables. Now, what I first did was I wanted to, I wanted to look at my revenues, well I wanted my revenues to be broken down by brands and by month because my expenses were by month as well, right? So we want to try and formulate something like for like there. So what I did, I'll just um, unhide this so we can see it better. So I used Summarize to create um, a table, uh, basically this is a table function of my brands and my month and year. I've also just put in a category of revenue because this is all revenue right because i'm trying to think okay I'm, I'm i'm somehow going to integrate this into my expenses table so that we can make it all one table then i've used uh i've created a first date uh, which was which enabled me to actually get a date which was which is actually key when we try and link this up to the date table at the end of the day and then I've gone and uh, got my values, right? So I've used my measure, I've branched out um, by Im Im incorporating into this summarize function. And then now I have my revenue broken down by month by brand, okay? Now, if I quickly jump back here, you'll see here that this is what that has done. You'll see, if we drill into this part here, you'll see that re the revenue uh, is now uh, three different line items per brand, which is exactly what I wanted because um, that's how I set up that table. Now, here comes here comes the tricky part. Now, first of all, I hide this because I don't actually need it. And this is where the integration comes in. And this is just where you know things can get amazing. Like if, if it, it took a few steps, but what I did, right? What I did is I used I used the union function. Union is a table function. And you'll see, and what union basically does is it doesn't append. You can append one table on top of another. Right, and so what I've done is I've appended expenses onto another table of that table I just created, and the reason I did that is because I needed to match these columns out exactly for the union to work, and so what I did was I created a summarize of the table that I just went over that that, that I used summarized as well for, um, but I used summarize and then um, set up the table with the exact columns that I wanted in the exact order, right? So that they matched up with the exact expenses table that I generated in the query editor. And then what happened is that now we have this one table. And so if, we, if I just come down to the bottom, you'll see here they've got expenses, expenses, expenses. And if I come down to the bottom now, um, you'll see that the revenues appear. The revenues appear uh, and they appear with the brand name um, as per this particular part of uh, this table function as well. And then I also put an index in there, and that was this is only because I, I want to make sure that I can sort the table correctly. So there you have it. And then, okay, so this is now the integrated table, right? So we have integrated tables, uh, two totally separate tables that were totally not optimized to create any sort of financial reporting. We've brought them in all automatically. There's no manual intervention that would be required here automatically inside of Power BI, then we have, um, because of this date, because of this, this is a, this particular column here, this particular column is a date. You remember earlier I had to bring in a date. Because this is a date, what I can do is in the model, I can create a very simple relationship from my date table, which is essential because we're going to do some time intelligence or time comparison type um, analysis with uh, all the great time intelligence functions. I'm going to create a simple relationship that flows down the hill, uh, hits the hits the mini side, which is our financial details. And then this is where we can create our table from, this particular table here. We don't even have to worry about any of the other um, part of um, any the rest of our model any other core model i like to call it 
um, which is going to be used through all this other analysis um, that, that, that we'll be going through in the, in, during the learning summit. But now that we've created this table, we can then start running all of our analysis, running all this great analysis on our financials. So you see here I've got a measure, a measure group of financial analysis and I've got all my insights there. We've, we can create a really simple um, table here that enables us to see our revenues, our expenses, um, you know, our, our cost, of, cost of goods sold, so on and so forth. Down here we've got summary metrics we can compare our revenues versus our cost of goods sold. So there's all this great stuff, right? It's just seriously amazing what you can do when you can create or optimize your tables. And in this case, we've integrated tables, we've integrated data from different tables um, you know, within our financial reports. And then what I've also done inside of here is um, I've enabled us to drill into any aspect of our financials, right? And because it's all one table, it's all quite seamless. So we can drill into, say, expenses, uh, and then drill into our cost of goods sold just like that. And then we can quickly review how we're going versus uh, our actuals versus our last years versus our difference last years. So as I say, I'll be going into far more detail, but I really wanted to break this out because I think that this is just like unbelievable type of work you can do, it, especially for uh, financials and, and accountant accountancy type work inside of Power BI. Um, and you don't need to go and regenerate tables like an Excel or uh, you, know, you can actually find a way, you can find a way inside of Power BI um, to integrate these things out of your live data you know, in terms of the data sets that you um, already have. It's just about finding, imagining ways that you can create the integration and those steps that I used I think is a, is a brilliant way to do it and then you can integrate it into your model in a, in a really intuitive way. So as, as I say, I'll be going into this in way more detail uh, during the Learning Summit because uh, it's just it's, it's such an important part of great analysis inside of Power BI. And also, if you register for the Learning Summit, you get hold of, you get hold of this resource. You know, I give away this resource for free. Um, so there, uh, for those who, who, who do register and, and, and who do attend live. So um, certainly register. I'll leave a link below in the description. All the best. Talk to you soon. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.